Hello, welcome to the London Bookshop Crawl Online. I'm Bex and I'm here today with Nikki, who is the manager of Amnesty Bookshop in Kentish Town. Hi, Nikki. Hiya. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're trying to do some more bookseller interviews this year for the online bookshop crawl. So we're really happy to be able to chat to you. Um, and I've got some questions. So if I keep looking over here, it's just because I've got my cheat sheet over here of That's the questions. <laughs> got my little setup um so could you tell us a little bit about your particular amnesty bookshop because there are a few um but we'd yeah. like to know more about your one yeah sure so Kentish Town opened at the end of May in 2019 um and uh we're directly opposite the um welcome to Kentish Town mural it's beautiful actually um so and you can see that as soon as you walk out of the tube station so we're literally like maybe a two minute walk from the tube station um and uh, most of our stock is uh, made up of donations from people in the community and around um we're really lucky because um we have a lot of writers a lot of publishers and a lot of magazines and journals in our area so we get some really good stuff. Um, and also our community is incredibly diverse. Uh, it's a really diverse community. It's multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, um, and our books pretty much reflect their wide-ranging tastes. So um, yeah, you're always gonna find something really interesting in history, yeah. social sciences, um, travel writing. Uh, one of my favorite sections is essays. It's my, uh, it's my I love baby. essays. <laughs> I love essays. <laughs> so good. They're just about everything, you know. Um, and uh, we've got great children's books. Uh, I don't have kids, yeah. but I keep wanting to buy all of them. My kids um, have been to your shop and they, they have told me it's fantastic. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. Yeah, like I sometimes, sometimes end up wanting to fight with children. You know, no, no, that's mine. That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I'm glad that they find good stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and we've got the usual. We've got the classics, and we get some really good fiction. Really, really good fiction. Yeah. And then also because we've got a big French community, French and European community, we um we get a lot of foreign language and oh, really good foreign language so yeah I'm, I think I'm going to expand that foreign language section because we've got so much of it it's great yeah that sounds fantastic because we always have a lot of um like student participation and stuff in the bookshop crawl and so I often get a lot of people asking where um they can get foreign language text so that's really good to know actually because I can yeah point them in your well, direction <laughs> <laughs> yeah no got great stuff here yeah oh yeah. brilliant okay um yeah, we're really happy to have you guys involved. And I know you've been involved. I knew you were a newer, a newer bookshop because I know it's been the last few years that you've been involved yeah. in the bookshop crawl, um, sort of on and off. Obviously, last year was a weird year, but <laughs> um, yeah. but this year, hopefully, people will have the chance to visit your shop in person um, and share some photos, which will be yeah. great. Yeah. Um, okay, so my next question um, that I'm going to ask was, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the history of the Amnesty Bookshops? Um, because I was reading online about the Hammersmith one originally being a book stall that was turned into a bookshop. Yeah. Um, and I know that yeah, there so seems to have been a bit of an explosion of Amnesty bookshops in recent years. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's going to be more too. But yeah, yeah. so basically, um, you're right. It started off as a stall in the um, Hammersmith tube station. And um, it was set up by Amnesty local Amnesty members. So um, I think it was a couple called, or not a couple, but there two people called Christine Payne and Dick Langton. And they basically set it up to raise money for local campaigns. Um, and so many of the older bookshops actually had the same kind of format. So they were set up by Amnesty members. Um, and then they just realized that actually it worked really well. People were very supportive. Um, you know, the fact that they were buying books linked very well to Amnesty's aims. Um, and yeah, just they just kind of grew from there. And at the moment, there are 10 bookshops around the country, two in London, 
Um, and yeah, there are plans to open quite a few more in the next couple of years. So uh, Amnesty is expanding. That's it's great. It's really good. That's brilliant. Yeah. 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 I do. I do love our charity bookshops that join in with the bookshop crawls around the country because it's just always such a, a good um, way of. I think also making the bookshop crawl accessible to people who maybe have a lower budget because it can be quite an expensive thing to visit a lot of bookshops and obviously having charity ones there is is brilliant it's a brilliant way of also feeling like you've got like loads of new books that are shiny and exciting and maybe spending a fraction of the amount that you would spend and knowing that your money is going to go to a charity to support the work that they do and speaking of that actually it brings me accidentally neatly onto my third question (laughs) didn't mean to do that but um, so I was wondering um obviously Amnesty International is quite a well-known charity I think probably most people will have uh, know something about Amnesty um, and yeah. what they do but is, are there any uh, specific campaigns or any specific ways the bookshops support amnesty or is it all just general to the running no. of amnesty? so it's not it's not we don't support specific campaigns but all our money goes towards all of the campaigns uh hosted by amnesty international uk so wow. Basically, your money goes towards that. That's it doesn't really go towards anything else. Um, and um, I mean, the other thing that the bookshop, the other sort of service the bookshop provides is, you know, we're a, I guess we're a sort of very safe and welcoming space for everybody in the community. So, you know, it's not just it's not just you come here and buy a book and, you know, and support Amnesty. You're basically coming here and you're taking part in the community, you know, and you're, you're supporting us, but you don't have to buy a book, you know, to come and to come and visit us in the bookshop. You know, we're very much, um, yeah, we're just very much here for a chat, really. A lot of us, we, also because a lot of the volunteers are locals. Um, so, you know, it's like, we're here, we're going to be open, yeah. you know, come, chat to us and if you want to buy a book that's great your money's going to go towards our campaigns and you know and everyone feels good about that um but otherwise you know we're just a nice safe space for anybody to come and hang out in yeah Um, we also have a couple of local initiatives um so many of the bookshops still work very closely with the local amnesty groups so obviously if they're doing a particular campaign so a lot of the time they come in and they'll they'll use our shops for um right for rights which is a campaign tied to amnesty um and that's basically to support young you know young uh, activists who are currently uh being held in detention or prison um it's very sad, but uh, yeah, they generally that generally happens at Christmas time, and it's it's really sad. You basically write them uh, postcards or cards to you know to keep their spirits up yeah. and just sort of you know show support to them because you know they're young and they really shouldn't be where they are. But um, yeah, so that's really quite that's that's quite um, that's quite a good initiative. But um, Otherwise, we do other things like supporting local artists. So the Kentish Town Bookshop will, um, we stock cards and postcards by local artists. Um, And we also, we also invite them to come and uh, decorate our windows so they can do the painting of uh, the windows when we do specific promotions like, you know, Black History Month or Pride or, you know, anything like that. We kind of invite them to come along and, and paint the window. You don't get paid in, in cash, but you get paid in books. Well, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't object to that, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you get to, like, practice on the window and we don't really care if it's rubbish. It's just nice to, you know. We just, yeah, it's just nice to have people taking part. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great to see that extended through a charity bookshop as well, because bookshops, I think, in general are, I mean, for me specifically, there was feel like a bit of a safe space and you can just go in yeah. and not feel pressured and just feel like it's calm usually. And, you know, somewhere right. you can kind of take five minutes away from being with all the people. <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's nice. And actually, we're, just somehow keep coming on to the next question very naturally which has never happened to me before in my history of speaking to people but um so a question that I was wondering about which you've touched on I think a little bit already 
Um, do you think there are any differences between working in specifically a charity bookshop and just working in uh, not just sorry secondhand bookshop, but working in a secondhand bookshop that's not affiliated with a charity? Um, yeah, yeah, not just a secondhand bookshop. I love secondhand bookshops. Oh yeah, really me too. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, no, I mean I think there is a difference. Um, it's subtle, but there is a difference. So basically, mostly because our bookshops are made up of volunteers um, who are local, like I said, um, but they're also from all, all walks of life. So we've got students, we've got job seekers, we've got hirees, we've got so many different types of people and they all come from completely different backgrounds. Um, and they come here because they love books they like they really like to support amnesty you know they're really into human rights yeah. why wouldn't you yeah um, and, <laughs> and um you know and they just I don't know it just it means that the space is very sort of informal and very relaxed and you know you're generally going to find somebody who's a little bit like you you know behind the counter kind of asking if they can help you yeah um, and so you've got that and then um also like you've said previously you know when you buy a book um it's not just that you've you've got this special thing that you're going home you sort of also feel a little bit like yeah you've kind of you've contributed a little bit to you know to to a good cause so yeah. it sort of makes you feel good makes us feel good we know that the money is going towards uh amnesty campaigns so you know at the end of the the week when we toss up the total it's like you know yes we've raised this much money for you know for amnesty it feels great you know yeah yeah um, and people often say books change the world but I do feel like when I'm shopping in charity bookshops it's that little bit extra of like obviously yeah. there's lots of ways in which books can change people's worlds but this is like a practical physical thing that you can say you know yeah. I've given money to to this charity that's going to do xyz thing that is going to make a difference in the world yeah. in whatever yeah. way which is a brilliant yeah. thing to be able to say I think yeah no, it, feels, it feels good yeah. yeah and also you just never know what people are going to donate so you know the kind of stuff that you can find here I mean most of our stuff is priced pretty much at like the three pound mark but every now and again you're going to find something that's really super special which yeah. you know I, people just sort of feel like oh, you know, this is worth something. Let's give it to Amnesty because they yeah. can, you know, make money out of it. So, yeah, yeah, it's, I like that aspect too, you know. Yeah, that's great. I hadn't thought about that, but I guess, yeah, that that must happen because you you think, oh, you know, I could sell this on eBay or I could just give it, you know, you could give it to the, yeah. to the charity bookshop and then they'll be able to raise money for charity, which is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay my final question uh we're asking everyone that we speak to this year um to tell us about some of their favorite London bookshops and any brilliant books they've read recently that we should all be reading <laughs> okay well um yeah let's stick with the uh the theme of secondhand bookshops um and like we both said we both love them and one I'm not sure that many people would tout that much is uh Black Girl Books in Camden yes um it's a tiny, tiny uh, shop, uh, but they stock an excellent range of classics and fiction. And I found some very good nature writing there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but don't tell you. I'm going to have to go um, take, a, take a visit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to edit that out. <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just, I love all the secondhand bookshops in, in London. In fact, I love all the bookshops, but yeah, yeah the secondhand books are, are great. I think it's quite special because you sort of go in there and it sort of feels like an Aladdin's cave of treasure, you know? Yeah. And you come out with something that you're just like, wow, I don't, I bet no one else I know has this. You yeah, know? absolutely. <laughs> I thought this, I went on, um, in the, just to digress slightly, in the summer bookshop crawl, I went to um, a bookshop in Norwich that is currently, the names escape me, but it is like a little labyrinth. And I went and I found this book about Arthur Ransom who wrote um, Swallows and Amazons, but it was this woman who'd like, yeah, yeah followed his footsteps in the 80s and done this whole project to find out where all the places were that were in the books and I was like I would never have known this book existed had I not been in this bookshop and just picked it up so random oh. but that's one of the great things about secondhand bookshops I think like you said yeah. <laughs> sorry to yeah. interrupt and completely no, no, that's a great interruption. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. um, any great books yeah. you've read recently that oh, you want great to 
Uh, so many, but the one that really stands out is uh, The Unwomanly Face of War by uh, Svetlana Aleksevich. She's the Nobel Prize winning Belarusian writer um, who basically, this particular book is about the really incredibly brave Russian women who took part in World War II. Um, and I mean, the way Svetlana writes, it's all an oral history. So it's all these stories told by so many different women who took part. And, um, and what you end up with is this incredible sort of, it's almost like a historical quilt made up of individual stories and sort of gives you this overview of, of history that is, uh, it just feels very personal and very sort of touching and and kind of timeless you know sort of that's what happened in Russia but you can you can see so many people going through the same experiences you know just yeah. because it's actually more it's history from a very human perspective not from you know a statistical perspective yeah um so yeah I just I just I loved it and I I pretty much I recommend anything she writes because it's not she writes as a historian, but she's actually not a historian. She's basically writing people's stories. Oh, wow. So um so great. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it yeah. sounds I've had her on my radar for a little while, obviously, but I've not actually read anything of hers yet. So that's definitely bumped it up my, <laughs> oh, my yeah, name. yeah. Yeah, that when sounds brilliant. History sometimes feels a bit like you know a bit daunting oh there's going to be dates there's going to be this there's but actually because it's just so people orientated it's sort of story driven yeah it just yeah it's very sort of it feels very personal it's great yeah, yeah it sounds that sounds great um so that's one for people to add to their wish lists when they're yeah. visiting you during the bookshop crawl weekend yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, Definitely. thank you so much for speaking to me today. Okay. Um, and everybody watching this, you should check out the big list where all the details of Amnesty Bookshop will be with the opening hours and everything else. Um, and you should definitely visit them. Um, yeah, so we look forward to seeing you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nikki. Take care. You too. Cheers. <laughs>